Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And as we're approaching spring in the UK, we'll have a look at buying a new bike. And it's a private sale rather than one from a dealer and a few things you can have a look at. Now there's lots of films out there about looking at the bike and things to look at on the bike and things to poke at on the bike. But I'm going to do this a little bit differently because the first thing I'm going to be doing is looking at this lovely shiny red tracer which i'm really interested in but look the garage door's open so rather than look at the bike we'll take a quick swerve into the garage bikers like talking bikes and we'll see what else we can see here in here which might make you think it's going to be a good or a bad buy first up and importantly not too far inside the door we've got some cleaning brushes Hmm, maybe they do look after the bike and clean it more often than just when they want to sell it. Another thing to do, if you do get the chance in this sort of situation, run your fingers over the brushes. If they're wet, the bike might just only have been cleaned for you to have a look at. If they're dry, the chances are the bike's maintained in a good condition and it's been sat in the garage in the dry for a bit. Next up, there's some toolboxes that are open. And looking at the first one, there's a tyre pressure gauge, an inspection mirror, a measuring stick and a few other things in there that look like they're going to be used more than others and are easily to hand. Moving down the shelves we come across a jet wash and also hidden away here is a little cable oiling tool. All makes me think that the person that owns the bike is looking after it and finally we get down to a foot pump. Now all of these are at the front of the garage, easily accessible and makes me think they're used a lot so the bike looks like it's being looked after. Amazingly there's a drawer bin left open, a good high quality set of spanners with a few duplicates for certain sizes and have a look below them. There's a bit of rubber matting that uh, is protecting the spanners from making too much noise when the drawers open and close and keeping them in place. See also the rubber mat film that I did recently makes me think that the person that owned this bike is looking after it properly. A bit further in there's another toolbox with the lid open. There's a multimeter in there. There's also a couple of genuine Honda oil filters and also a filter cup for uh, removing the filter and uh, reinstalling the new one. It's all looking good so far. A helmet and a selection of winter and summer gloves on the shelves and also next to them a large amount of sprays. There's all sorts on here, contact cleaners, all the way down to lubricants and weirdly, because it's where I keep them in the garage, stuff for re-waterproofing my textile clothing. If you go into a garage, if the bike's stored in one and that's where you get a chance to see it, and there's not even chain lube, do you really want to be buying the bike? Rubber gloves are also a good clue that somebody's working on the bike and oh, this is a bit weird, a vacuum gauge. So this looks like somebody that actually does quite a lot of in-depth work on their bike and knows it. Also to the side here we have a chain breaker and riveting tool. So that's another good sign that it's somebody that knows what they're doing owns this bike. And here we have a workshop manual. Don't get too distracted by the manual though because right next to it there's a torque wrench in its plastic holder. And on top of another toolbox there's a genuine workshop manual for one of the bikes in the garage. The front cover's got some oil on it, but opening it up, it's pristine inside. But looking at the front of it, we've also got the oil spots and on the spine, there's a little bit of damage at the bottom. So it looks like this has been used. Oh, and in the background, there's an Optimate that's charging a bike up. So yeah, maybe the person that's selling the bike doesn't ride all their bikes year round, or it's maybe just doing a maintenance top up, which I do once a month, just shove all the bikes that I'm not using regularly on an Optimate and uh, keeps them all charged, lovely. There's quite a lot of engine oil here. It's a 10W40, a fairly bog standard one for most bike engines. The bike I'm looking at buying, in theory, is only a year old, so it's still under warranty, so hopefully the services are being done at a main dealer. But having the oil here, 4 litres, that's enough for an oil change on one of the other two bikes in the garage, a 900 Hornet and CB500. But also, there's another one here, slightly different blend, which is the right one for the Himalayan. And Himalayans, I know, use a little bit of oil if they're used at the top end of the speed range so it's probably just to top those up. Also hidden away back here 
it's an oil can. That's great, it looks like they do take good care of their bikes. Towards the back of the garage and amongst all the stuff that's not going to be used as often, look at that, four chain and sprocket sets, that's one for each of the bikes in the garage. And you'll also see they've all got the names of the bikes they intended for written on them. Moving across to the other side of the garage and hung up on a uh, piece of wood, there's not a shelf there, there's a couple of high vis jackets, a couple of saws and a lot of brake pads. And more importantly than the fact that there's brake pads there, they've actually got written on them what they're for. There's also a good selection of cables here and oh look, another set of scrubbing brushes. The set of brushes I saw earlier are getting a bit worn out and as this particular garage is a long way from any bike dealers, the person selling the bike obviously thinks ahead and keeps stuff in stock that they might need at fairly short notice and don't want to have to travel for. Sod's Law says it'll happen over a bank holiday weekend when a lot of places might be closed. More than one bike in the garage, you've got a lot of things to keep on top of with chain adjustments, torque settings and everything else. A whiteboard screw to the wall has got a lot of information on it. All goes to point to the fact that the person that owns this bike does look after it. Coming back towards the front of the garage along the right hand wall, we also have a lot of stickers. These are the ones for the tyres on the various bikes. I like to do this because what I can do is look at the wall and get the right tyre size when I'm ordering one, rather than scrabbling around on the ground uh, with the torch try trying to see what size tyres are fitted to the bikes. Makes it easier having it stuck to the wall. And moving to the very front right hand side of the garage, again easily accessible, a spray of muck off bike cleaner which is half used and I did at the back clock there's a 5 litre top up bottle for these and also some Scott Euler FS365, I know from personal experience, this is good stuff, you spray it on the bike after cleaning, you spray it on the bike once a week in winter and it helps things stay nice and shiny. Also in the background we have a manual hand pump garden sprayer, this is in addition to the jet wash we've already seen and I find them more gentle on the bits of the bike you don't want to be spraying high pressure water into. So Bish Bash Bosch in 30 seconds of looking around the garage I formed an opinion of how well the person that I'm buying the bike from is actually looking after it and it's looking pretty good so far. And what you want to do now is go out and have a good look at the bike and get a test ride if you can. There's lots of other people deal with things like that and what to look for and how to check over the bike. So I won't be covering that but in part two I'll show you some of the other things to check to make sure that you get a good bike at a good price. So for now, if you're looking for a new bike, hope you find what you want at the price you want and happy riding. See you out on the road sometime.